Hello, this is Piano Tech Maggie, and this video is about a recent fad of people wanting to tune their piano to A432. There have been several fads about the resonant frequency of the universe being magical, and the frequency in question has changed with each fad. For a while, it was A466.2, then A481.8, but the latest is A432 based on the Schumann resonance. So I'll focus on that one in this video. There are several videos out there debunking A432 being a magic frequency, and the point of this video isn't to duplicate those, so I'll share links to a few of those in the description in case you'd like to check them out. The point of this video is only to explain some things about setting A on a piano to a frequency other than 440 because of one of these fads. The videos I'll put in the description also explain a bit about the history of our pitch standard as well as our definition of frequency, so I'll try to keep that information to a nutshell here. When we use the letter A before a frequency number, it means we are tuning all our other notes from the starting point of A at that frequency. If the number for A goes up, all the other notes go up. If the number for A goes down, all the other notes go down. Our current pitch standard is A440, meaning the A above middle C on our pianos is supposed to vibrate at 440 Hz or 440 cycles per second. So, for the sake of argument and for the main point of this video, let's assume that A432 is indeed a magic frequency of the universe. Yeah, I wonder if we could tune our pianos, actually tune the whole piano or our bodies, get our bodies in tune with the frequency of the universe. Could we explode like like a wine glass explodes when you sing when you sing its own frequency to it? Regarding our magic frequencies, all of them are based on an infrasonic vibration, meaning they are far below the range of human hearing. These subfrequencies are then multiplied up until they reach a range close to middle C. Why middle C? Because these original note multiples have ended up being somewhere around C, and middle C is in the center of the piano, so why not? This means the multiples of our original frequency weren't even A to begin with. The frequency of A is then determined using the multiplied up frequency as a starting point for tuning the rest of the notes around it. Since our pitch standard always starts with A, whatever A becomes from the multiplied up frequency is said to be the magic number. So, not only is the original note not A at all, it isn't even close to the A above middle C because it's a subtone. In addition, Adam Neely points out that the original figure for A in equal temperament was 430.4, .4, and those who decided to popularize it as a magic number decided to round it up so they could have pretty math. Why am I mentioning equal temperament? Because there are many ways to tune a piano, and not all of these would put A at the same frequency if we kept our C closer to the original magic number multiplied up. Again, for the sake of argument, let's assume this A is the magic number, although I hope by now you realize it's not because the magic number is a single digit. Let's say we tune the A above middle C on our piano to the magic frequency of 432 Hertz. On pianos, we have something called inharmonicity. Basically, because the harmonics from piano strings shoot sharp as they go up, the lower notes must be tuned lower so their harmonics line up with the upper notes, and upper notes must be tuned higher so their fundamentals line up with harmonics of the lower notes. I can share some links about that in my description too. The result of inharmonicity is that we can't, literally cannot, tune octaves on a piano to multiples of each other. It would sound kind of crappy. Speaking only of pianos and inharmonicity, if we tune the A above middle C to A432 or 430.4, .4, the C below it must end up out of tune with the original number we got from multiplying up from our original subtone frequency. Not only that, but every A and C on our piano will also be out of tune from that original magic multiple. It isn't possible to tune any magic frequency on a piano except one note, and that note isn't even in the original frequency because it's in the range of human hearing. Regarding the Schumann resonance, it has its own harmonics and its own inharmonicity. 
except the harmonic series of the Schumann resonance goes flat, the exact opposite of a piano wire. So when we multiply the frequencies up from a root number of the Schumann resonance, we aren't even doing that properly because we are using exact multiples, which the Schumann resonance doesn't follow. So with pianos, the question becomes, do you want to destabilize an entire piano and also make it unplayable with other instruments just for one note? Since that one note isn't even the magic note, I personally feel it isn't worth it at all, but it could be done. I would like to propose an alternative way of thinking. I mentioned that the harmonic series emanating from each piano string goes sharp as it goes up. That means that these harmonics are not multiples of their fundamental. Not only that, but each harmonic has its own harmonic series. So when you play the piano, you may be technically hitting every frequency possible within a certain range, and that would include any magic number along with many of its divisors and multiples. Even though these harmonics aren't within the human perception of hearing, they are there, just like the original frequency of the universe that we can't hear. If you look at it that way, it doesn't matter what pitch standard you use to tune your piano. The magic frequency will be there in one form or another. Maybe the real magic comes not from a particular frequency, but from the emotional reaction we have to making music by combining many of our frequencies in a rhythmic way, not to mention the syncing of our brain waves when we make music together. So tune your piano to A440 if you want to play with other musicians, or A415 if you want to play with Baroque musicians, and be content knowing your magic frequency is there somewhere, and maybe, just maybe, there is more magic in our music than can be summed up by one single number.